Four fifty x. Y equals fifty x. Is that what you got? That is correct. Y equals fifty x. Use the equation. How many text messages? Which you know, what are you saying in thirty days? I can do the second. So uh, yes, Seth. You just saw it on the iPad though. Yeah, yeah, no, no just, just tell me. Okay, it's it'd be one hundred fifty messages. Nope. Mm, you're very close. Oh wait. Because you're just multiplying the two, right? Yeah. So fifteen hundred. Just need another zero there. Very yeah, good, Drew. That should be 5 over 4. This is negative 5 over 4. Uh, but once you get into ninth grade, equations look a little bit different. And they call them something different. Okay? So, for example, the equations you may be used to may look something like this, like y equals 4x plus 2, right? Uh, what is the slope on this one? 4 over 1, four over one or 4. What's the y-intercept? Two. Two. Yeah, 0, 2, okay? Well, what's going to change here is now instead of y, because we hate that letter, we're going to be using this. Okay. Why would they do that? Notice, everything's the same except for instead of y, we say it's f of x. Okay. The reason that is is because this is what we call a function, <laughs> which is why you guys now are functioning. All right. Uh, what's the slope of this function? Four over one. Four over one. What's the y-intercept? Zero, Zero, two. Two. Zero two. Okay, so nothing's changed. Except for instead of y, we use f of x. Okay, this, I understand some of you are going to be very confused by this. And on the test when it says, please write a function for this, you're going to write y equals because f of x ruined your life. Okay? Also, you'll need to know that this is said f of x. Okay? It, that means that F really just stands for, it's a function. It's a function of X. Meaning, based on X values, you're going to have a different value on the left side of the equal sign. Right. Now for functions, <laughs> for functions, there's just really one big condition that you need to know about, okay? That F X equals Y. You can't have x values repeat. What? Okay. So you can't have you can't have one x value that has that has two corresponding y values. What do you mean? I, I know, that sounds really confusing, right? So in but other words math. This is eighth grade math. Yeah, but you're All right. saying, you're saying in math. So let me show you what this looks like. On on a graph, what for example, what you may see is something that looks like this. Okay. See Okay, so let, let me draw the graph in here. Okay, so if this is the graph. No, 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 this is... I'm not asking you to write an equation for that graph. I'm just asking you to look at the graph and realize, see, for this value of x, let's say that's 1, right? See how it has 1, 2, 3 y values? Corresponding y values. Oh, my god. That means that this would not be a function. What? Oh, because it can't have multiple y values. Because it can't have, it, very good, it can't have many y values for one x value. His hand is so let's say that this value here would be, for example, 1, 1, right? This up here may be 1, I don't know, sure, 5 sounds good. And then this one would be 1 and negative 3 sounds good. Okay. See how over here we've got the same x value here, but we have different y values. That means it's not a function. And this will be important for you guys, especially ninth grade. Some people call this a vertical line test. 
So if I draw a vertical line, see how the function passes over the vertical line one, two, three times? That means it's not a function. Okay? You'll, you'll hear about that more in ninth grade, uh, calculating it and all that kind of garbage. So if this is the example, and we have something that looks like this. There's two x values. Okay. Is this a function? Yes. Well, let's look. So see, if I draw a vertical line here, see how there's many y values for this one x value? So it's not a function? It is not a function. This is the graph. So you guys see this graph. Uh, in ninth grade, you'll have some stuff that looks like this. Okay. So, well, you, can, you don't even need the vertical line test because we can just use the y-axis, which shows a point here and a point here where x is 0. That's two y values for one x value. Then it's this is not much. a function. Uh, so it just has to be like one line? Then, Mr. Sal? Hmm? Then it can only be one line? Like, can I, can I... For this, I'm going to draw some lines, and you guys are going to tell me if it's a function. Okay? Okay. So, no. what about this one? No. That's function. Yes, that is a function. function. Okay? So basically, if it's What about mm, this one? That's function. Yes. Function. What about no. this one? No. no. That definitely is a function. Oh, yeah, that yeah, is. Because if you go. Okay. There. There's no. So basically, oh, if it's more than once, it's less. Well, okay, well, let's look at this one. Let's look at this one. That's not a function because it's curvy sideways. Is this a function? No. Yes. yes. It absolutely is a function. Because there's no two y values for each x value. No. Yes. Oh. Yeah. It, remember, it's, it's the vertical line, right? So if I draw a vertical line here, is there more than one x value? More than one yes. y value? No, there's just one right oh, here, right? With all the lines. What about this one? Well, no, there's only one x value for there. What about right here? Oh, yep, still only one. one x value. And, of course, it's easiest to tell on a graph sometimes. Uh, so let's look. Uh, what about this one? No. Yes. Is that a function? Yeah. Yes. yeah, sure it is, right? They just can't be facing this What one. about they can't be facing this one? Yes. yes. Okay. Then what about... Uh, no. This one? No. No, because there's infinitely number of y values for this, right? What about higher. this? No. This one? No. no. What about this? Making a roller coaster, this Mr. One? Sal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a function. No, it looks like a frog. So let's look at uh, a couple more examples. So that was with a graph, right? With a table. Oh, this is going to be hard. Then you have to graph you'll it. You'll see these with a table, and no, you do not have to graph it. You just have to tell by the points. But it'll give you some points of x and y's. Well, actually, they're, they're not going to use y anymore, right? They're going to use f of x. They're going to say, this is f of x right up in here. Because f of x is y. That is correct. So let's say that we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. And we do this uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Would this be a function? Yes. Yes, this would be a function. Because they're all even. There's no negatives. <clears throat> because there's no repeats for x. That's the only reason. There's no repeated x's? What do you mean? Sure, I'll put a negative in there. Does that make a difference? No. No, it yeah, does it not. Does. Wait, wait, wait. The only thing you're looking for is an, an x value to repeat. Then, oh, so if, it, if, an, if an x value repeats, Oh, like the domain then, range. Oh, yeah, they're all then it down. is not a function, okay? Because it goes on forever. So, for example, if I add another column here and I say that this is uh, 2 and 21, it's a now it is not a function because, because the two's on the you've got a 2 here and a 2 here, and these are different values. Another way they're going to show this is they're just going to give you a bunch of points like this. Maybe something like this. I don't know.
It repeats. It's not a function because okay. it wants to repeat. So you look at this one. You'd see here's a one. There's a one, and they have different corresponding y values, so this one would not be a function. Wait, but what if it's like one and two and... That's what I was saying. You said it okay, doesn't matter. Okay, well, I misunderstood the question. I apologize. That's seven. All right, well, if we take away that last point, do any of the x values repeat now? No. No, so we're good. So okay. it's a function. <laughs> All right, you guys need to understand the difference between independent and dependent variables. There's one way to find out when you see these Nine. rates. Uh, for example, dollars per hour, it's always Nine. dependent per independent. Okay, time is always independent. Always, okay? It can't depend on time. Time is, it never depends on anything. It just is time, okay? It does what it wants. Uh, number of downloads, okay, so let's look at this second equation or the second problem. All right, so let's look at this one. We've got uh, this equation... The equation D equals 4.5H represents the number of miles D Amber can run in H hours. So, hold on a second. Which of these is independent? The, the D. Well, it told you that hours was in there. Time is always independent. So time is independent. Number miles, of miles is dependent. Okay? Wait, what is that? What? All right, let's look at this next one. Uh, the equation S equals G plus 3 represents the final score of the game S after G goals in the final period, okay? So G would be the number of goals in the game plus 3, which happened in the final period. And S was a lot of time. And S is the final score uh, that's what I meant. of the game, okay? So, no, actually, that's the other way. The games is... Uh, G is the number of goals in the final period. Three was scored the rest of the game. Uh, it doesn't matter anyways. So notice the final score, it will depend on how many goals were scored during the game. So final score was S. So S depends on the number of goals scored during the game. There's the answers. Okay, so choose four values to make x, uh, four x to make a function table for each function, okay? Oh, so why uh, then state the domain and range. Know? Listen, this middle column really is, is for you to do your work. Okay, so it says it wants four values, four x. So what values do you guys want to use? One. One. One and seven. Two, two and three. three. I'm going to choose zero because zero is also very easy, okay? Is that okay? Well, frankly, I don't care if it's okay. Only if you want it to be, Mr. Collins. <laughs> okay, so 1 minus 9 is? Negative 8. Negative 8. 2 minus 9 is? Negative 7. Negative 7. Negative 6. 3 minus 9 is? Negative 6. 0 minus 9 is? Negative 9. Negative 9. Bam. That's our table, all right? You can show your work here in the middle if you want, but... Uh, I, I didn't really feel like it was necessary. On the test, you will need to show work, but I'm not going to give you a middle column like this, okay? No, you're just All right, uh, state the domain and range. Well, we need the domain and the range, so yes. One, two, three, and zero. There may be different values that you guys use on the test for this. You just do one minus the function. Well, it's what? You do one, and then you put the function in it. I did what? All right, so the domain on this one, we used 1, 2, 3, and 0. Oh, my fancy brackets. All right, the f of x, uh, what is my uh, range? 7, 6, 9. Negative 8, negative 7. Negative 6, negative 9, and your times is Fancy brackets. So what four values do you guys want to use? I'm seven. telling you I'm using seven, zero and one first. Four and three. Nine. Seven and, four. and nine. Nine. Nine's good. Fourteen's a big number. Seven. All right, so again, the X value, we're just replacing with these domain values, okay? So seven times zero is zero. zero. Seven. Seven times one is? Seven. Seven times seven is? Nine. Seven times nine is? Sixty-three. Excellent work. State our domain and our range. It's zero. Now we got zero, zero one, seven, seven, 
Niner. I got zero, seven, forty niner. Sixty three. Here they used much different numbers than the ones we used. Both here and here. Alright, find f of negative three. So notice that regular notation of this is f of x. All this means is that x is negative three. All right, so this is just saying find y when x is, in this case, negative 3, okay? So we're going to write the uh, function. So you've got f of negative 3 equals 2 times... Times negative 3. Yeah, that's negative 3, right? Plus 1. Plus the one. So then you do... So 2 times negative 3 is... Negative 6. 6 plus 1 is... Negative 5. Negative 5, so... This is how your answer should look. If it does not look like this on the test, it's wrong. So you don't Questions like this, yeah, all they're saying is, what is this, what is y when x is negative 3? So replace x with negative 3 and call it good. All right, some of you may have remembered, maybe in elementary, you guys could get on those computers and then have a little tray there, then out here, it was like a math machine, right? I'm going to have all these... What's that? Wheels and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then it would say, this is where you put your number in, and this what this is what comes out. Oh, right? No, no, oh, my God. God. No, no, you guys remember, all right? What is that? I've never seen that. Okay. Well, in other words, uh, what would happen is they would put some kind of a rule, which, as it turns out, is a function like x minus 3, right? And they'd say, if in this machine I put in x, and x is 5, what would come out? Well, then you, then in the computer, it would animate all this garbage, and the 5 would go in, and this would spin, and then out would come 2. two. Five, oh 5 minus 3 is 2. That's, that's what these functions are. It's just, uh, it's like a machine. You put the number in, and then it spits it out, and we celebrate, and eat bacon. I guess I should explain this because I know Mr. J has had struggles with this for ninth graders. You guys go into ninth grade and you're like, oh, that's F times 2. That is not multiplication. It's just a function. F of 2 It's not F times 2. F of 2 equals negative 2. All right, while you guys are finishing this, uh, let me show you guys another way you could write this. You could write it, so this f of 2 stuff right here, you could rewrite this as f of x when x equals 2, okay? Because the value of x in this case is 2, and then you're going to solve the actual function over here, okay? All right, Matt's going to do A for us. Okay, so if x is equal to x, then x is also equal to that x, or x is equal to 2, and x is also equal to that x, and x minus 4 equals, um, I so 2 minus 4 equals negative 2. So how should the answer look? F, so, F is Remember, Matt? Um, yeah. That thing. Good. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Close, close, close. All right. Very good, Matt. Thank you. All right, Matt, that's very good. Uh, the notation for your answer, okay, it has to look like this. So it's, it was f of 2. And what did Matt find that it was? Negative. Equal? Negative 2. This would be your actual final answer, okay? Okay, so if you were to graph this, what would your point be? 2, negative 2. Yeah, the x value was 2. The y value you found would have been negative 2, okay? You mean the f of x. It, well, you're right. It's f of x now, okay? And you'll see that on the graph. It will show that as well. Emily's got it. Thank you, though. Emily. Yeah, Emily. I'm not explaining it, so...
see. Can I just write in the answer? Talking to myself, Oh, one. 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 <laughs> and two. One fifth. <laughs> it's one and a half. Wow. Yeah, Emily. I did it right, okay, Cassidy? All right. That's one half, by Thank the way. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Sir, if I see a mixed number on the test, it's wrong. Okay, so all I'm saying is just convert this now then into an improper fraction. So f of 11 equals... 10 over 1. Oh, 5. 21 and fifths. Okay. What? So this this would get you full credit. This one, you get minus 1. Okay. I'm saying that now during the lesson so that during the test you don't make... You don't put these into mixed numbers, okay? All right, notice the function was f of x equals 1 half x plus 5. So it's 1 half, the x value is 11 plus 5. So 1 half times 11 would just give you 11 halves plus 5. But we need, it, we need common denominators before we add these, so it would be 10 halves, 21 halves. Done. What? All right, well, you guys will have to be doing uh, some function tables as well. It's just a table, okay? Uh, again, with the independent variable and the dependent variables. You guys should have learned about that stuff in science, and we've gone over it already. All right, so on this one, it says choose four, choose four values. It's chosen four. It's listed domain and range. It's found its range. We're good. Uh, we've done a problem like this. Again, I'm just going to do this one real quick. Uh, let's actually this one I'm going to do 0, 1, 7, and 8. So 0 minus 7 is negative 7. This is negative 6. 0 and 1. Uh, the domain and range for this. So I've got my domain with some fran fancy brackets. It looks like a very sad face. 0, 1, 1, 7, and 8. Wow. And your range. Is that not negative that seven, is? negative oh, six. Oh, I see. It looks so zero. sad. The, the it looks All like right. Mr. Sal, but fatter. Mm, is that possible? Yeah. All right. What? So on this one, uh, the book show, the book did different values for x, which they found different values for y. All right. She wants to marry Mr. Sal. These, uh, oh. For word problems, your uh, domain is going to make a, it's uh, going to be a big deal, okay? Because if we look at this problem, you put 770 peanuts in every jar of peanut butter. Uh, the domain and range, for example, would I use negative values for this, for the domain? No, because you could never have negative Mr. Sal, uh, you can never have said. negative jars of peanut butter, okay? Could I use decimals? I object, Mr. Sal. I have had a, a negative. Could I use decimals? You could if we're referring to jars of peanut butter. No, you could not because you can't have a decimal jar of peanut butter. But you can. All right, a scrapbooking store selling rubber stamps for four ninety five each. The total sales f of n is the function based on the number of ran, uh, rubber stamps sold. Okay, then find the independent and dependent variable. So our independent variable and dependent. So which of these is independent? Well, let, let me ask you this. Does the, does the amount we pay depend on how many stamps we buy, or does the stamps we buy depend on how much money? Yeah. Other one. It's the other way around. Okay, The amount you're going to pay is going to depend on the number of rubber stamps. Okay, So dependent is rubber stamps.
I'm sorry. It's uh, the price. Okay. The amount you pay will depend on the number of rubber stamps. Okay. So uh, this is the amount you pay depends on the stamps. So what values of the domain and range make sense for this situ situation? So they have to be positive. Positive values. And they must be whole numbers. Well, whole numbers are all positive anyways. So you just say whole numbers if you want. Okay? Some of you remember whole numbers is represented by this W. The final thing this wants is a function for the total cells. So remember, we want to find the cost, which would be f of x. They used n, and that's fine. It's going to equal, it's 495 for each stamp. So we'll just multiply that by the number of stamps we buy. Now this one says it wants to know how much it costs for five stamps. So again, you're just going to replace the x with 5. So f of five stamps would be 24... Seventy-five and dollars. All right. So again, they used n, and so this one used n. We said we'd use whole numbers. Oh, it has to explain the range values of the range. It's just going to be multiples of four ninety-five. That's all right. Do these problems. <laughs>